Hello and once again welcome to the Trumbull Lane. Today we're going to scratch build a water tower. Well, as you can see we've got a little bit of a pile of card again cut out by my trusty uh, cricket machine. Um, what I will do is at some point I will go through um, the design of, of an object or a, a job and get it all together and making something and taking it through from the design of the computer to the actual uh, cutting out of the card etc. So what we've got here, um, but again this has just been in my head, put onto the screen, cut out on the, on the machine and it's now on the cutting mat ready to be assembled. So again it's, it's going to be uh, egg on my face if it fails, uh, but uh, a round of applause if it works. The actual water tower, uh, I did have water towers somewhere and I probably might have a kit somewhere but this is again something I want to just put in in the uh, heritage area so it's got to be old-fashioned which water towers are because you don't go in with diesels obviously because not steam engines. Uh, it's made up of four sides uh, and I've gone back to this method of basically making a, a, a steel plated uh, effect and what we've got here we've got a bit of lattice work and a plain piece of card and when we stick one in front of the other you get that effect as though it's plated steel with the joins. Very difficult going towards a camera like that and steering it in the right direction. But that's that's the effect that I want. Whether it will work is something else. So the first job would be for the four sides to have their respective uh, plates glued on. As in the, the last project, um, the, the gird and uh, gantry, uh, I glued several pieces, to, well two pieces together to make them stronger. Again I should be doing that and that would form the legs. For each of the sides. Uh, I'll, I'll do two, but I have cut out enough to make three, to make them thicker, um, just in case I want them to be thicker and stronger. But uh, what we'll do, we'll try everything in, in the two to begin with. So, I'm going to start gluing away. And I'll glue those, and I'll explain what these are shortly.
So there we have our pieces. We have our four sides and four sets of legs. We do have these and like I said we'll go through what they are when the time comes. In fact I shall be using them as, as we go along. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the sides of this together. And when I was putting the, the edges on I noticed this one, the back piece, was smaller. And I cannot remember for the life of me now whether or not I distinctly made them small, one of them smaller, thinking that when they go together the sides would overlap to get a better edge and a bit of construction. Uh, and I might be right, but it didn't work with that one and that edge. So, obviously, if I was producing a lot of these, it would make a big difference, I'd get it right. So, first of all, let's start assembling. All the pieces together. Again, I shall put some of this down on here just to get that straight front edge or back edge to uh, have something to stick to, stop it from flapping around and moving. Again, if I was going to go into mass production of these, which I'm not, this is just uh, like a, a hobby of doing your own. I'm going to show you how, how I do it. So basically that's the tank, the water tank itself. Just for now, we'll forget the legs, but I'll go through what these are. Now, I haven't checked any photographs or looked at any visuals regarding these at all. But it's just what I can remember of seeing different water towers and tanks and think you know I must have had something like that so this is how I'm having it on my layout I applaud anybody who gets out the books or trawls the internet looking at photographs and researches these things properly and recreates what they see in the photograph to get prototypically correct. Yep, hands up. 
and I think it's great that people can go to those levels and do that. Right, so what we've got here is the edge because it needs to appear to be a thick construction or something at the top and my experience of seeing tanks like this uh, I have seen sort of borders like that at the top what I will say though is that when I did put these on the screen the design screen ready to cut it was pure guesswork and my intentions was for them to come over the edge around so they'd be bigger than the construction but all this was done on the fly it was gone midnight when uh, I was actually cutting them out on the, on the machine so it was around the midnight mark I was designing it and it was just something that came to my head and I thought yeah I'll do that and I'll make a video so that, that's where we're at with these if I don't like it and if it doesn't look very good it's cost me time and it's cost me a sheet of this card which is basically pence when you take into account the cost of a, a pack of I think it's 30 sheets for about eight pound then you can get card which is cheaper so what I'll do is I'll glue that on the top but before I do I'm going to get some uh, polystyrene and the reason for that will become obvious I did have a piece of polystyrene that I'd already cut so I can't find that So bear with me while I cut another piece. I said cut and then you heard me break it. Nearly. to put some polystyrene inside this and then what I'm going to do is an experiment again I've, I've never done it before never tried it I'm going to get some neat PVA to put it on this polystyrene and need it that thick The, the PVA is drying off. That's, that's good. Pulled it away a bit. Give a tight squeeze that. So. Hold that a few moments. 
and now you can see where this is done and made up as I go along and that sort of things that, that can happen so the effect that I want is because it's water tower it's going to have water in it and rather than fill a load of something inside I've filled that with uh, polystyrene to get the level up and now what I can do I can fit that on top because I wouldn't have that polystyrene is everywhere I wouldn't have got polystyrene in Like I, I said in my last video when I was building that gantry, I liken the, uh, well I'll compare the rocket card glue to uh, super glue for paper. And it really is sort of that sort of instant grab. Just hold it a few seconds and then it's got it. Now you, you do if you if you've got an exhibition layout then what you've got you've got hundreds of eyes, hundreds of sets of eyes peering all over your artistic work inspecting it at the shows on my layout you're either going to be here playing trains or you're going to be seeing things on video it doesn't matter how good your cameras are unless you go close up at it and you are doing close-ups then you don't actually um, see much fine detail so you can get away with I'm not saying doing it a bit rough but it boils down to just that excuse me while I have some more tooth for it gets cold So that's the tank with a, a certain volume of water in there, albeit it doesn't look like water at the moment. So let's concentrate on the legs. So far, so far, so good. So, so far, so good. It's not 100% perfect, but it's, it's getting there. So, 
So there we have it in the uh, heritage area. If I just zoom in basically what we've got, we've got the, uh, the water filling stand, the hose attachment which will go into the steam locos in the heritage area. Um, that will be up on a, like a, a small platform area just so it will sit nice, swing over, sit nicely into the uh, into the steam locos. It's only for show. It doesn't actually do anything because you obviously do now. So here we have the uh, the water terror just painted in the grey, and I'm happy with the uh, shade of grey that I've got. It looks a bit light on the uh, camera because the lights are coming in through the window, but. Uh, Tone it down. I'm going to put some darker black wash streaks coming down, and then I'm going to attempt to do some uh, some rust. We'll see how that goes. It's going to be the first time. I should do it live on camera as well. Okay, so I've prepared some some wash, which, in layman's terms, is just a very thin streaky sort of colour. Now that I think is probably too too thick and you can't wash it off. Pushing it downwards like this. Now, I don't know if I'm doing this the right, right thing here. It's having the effect of collecting on the on the ridges. It's not having the total effect that I, I wanted. And I don't know if that's because it's it's too thick or it's just not uh, applying right. As I say, this is not my forte. basically something I've stumbled across. Well, that's beginning to, to look something like what I want. More so on the, the one side than the other. And I think the, the more it sort of dries, the more it sort of looks right. Now that's it. I'll uh, get that to dry now. See, it's the water is evaporating, or the, the wetness is evaporating in front of us because it's still quite nice and warm in here. Right, you join me not so long after the last bit, and I think it's sufficiently dried enough to uh, add a bit of rust. And I thought I'd open this Revel weathering set. I can't remember which show I got it from. But, uh, it 
does rust. It's got uh, mud green, dark brown, deep black, snow white, rust red and sand yellow in the pack. And the instructions say, well, uh, the, the box says in different languages but including English, including illustrated instructions. Well, I can assure you there is a tray of six colours and nothing else. So it does say with the application of realistic signs of weathering are applied, a model is practically brought to life. With the six special pigments including in the set, any model can be given a truly authentic look. Various ageing techniques are explained in the accompanying instructions. Uh, well, Mr. Revel, I am sorry, but uh, whoever packed this box did not accompany me with the instructions. So, uh, I do know, come back to Moles Forgiven, um, I do know that there's a process of putting dog coat or mat coat varnish on If this is oil based or what? Smells a bit potent. Flammable, yeah, so it's not water based. I don't know whether to get a scrap piece of uh, card and paint it and try this or whether to gamble. And get this. Try this. Now, I'm just wondering which is the best way to show this on the layout. Bearing in mind it goes against the retaining wall. Is that the best piece to view, or is that the best piece to view? And I don't think it makes much difference. So. Right on this edge. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing by totally painting it with this uh, any of you out there who's uh, ever done this just let me know whether I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing. My guess is you'll be telling me I've done the wrong thing. I do say matte coat, so I'm hoping that dries matte. For the time being, that brush will go in water, although I do think it needs to go into uh, some form of thinners. So let's get rid of that part, zoom in a bit, and what I do know. Uh, the matte coat isn't being left to fully dry. It's uh, allowed to get tacky. So if I get the rust red out, which is like a powder, and sort out my tiniest brush.
me I do is just to get like a couple of rust spots if I get enough powder it's a postman into these rust spots while it's still sort of damp and tacky it will stick to it And then if I leave that enough to dry, I can then brush it downwards so it actually marks Where the lot of the, uh, well, the door coat varnish mat coat has uh, collected, it's got it wet and it does seem to have uh, Soaked it in a bit. So I'll leave that to uh, dry off a little bit and then we'll come back and then see what we can do with it. Right. Maybe I waited too long for it to dry, but it's basically painted those. So let's go for plant two. Spread, spread a bit more than I wanted it to, but and it doesn't look like I wanted it to. It looks like I've been painted in red, so that was a mistake. So we live and learn, but that is possibly the principles behind it. Let that dry, come back to it, see if it's uh, toned down a bit. Um, if it doesn't tone down, what I can do is just put a bit of a wash over the top of it and see what it looks like then. Um, well, we'll find out. And then the next thing to do would be the water in the top. And then after that, it's 
how do you get water out of the tank? Well, we need pipe work. So there'll be a pipe with a big tap underneath the tank, and then there'll be a filler pipe coming up the outside and going into the top. Okay, well, I'm fairly happy now with the effect that I've got on that. It's not uh, what some would say but it should be and it is a bit uh, shinier than what I, what I thought it would be. Uh, it's supposed to be a matte coat and that's what it says on the, uh, on the bottle. But uh, it seems to have a bit of a, a glaze to it. So the water in the top. What I'm going to do is I've got this Evo stick wood adhesive. Basically, is a very thick PVA, and it's ages old. And now I'm not going to be able to get the lid off. Here I am, and I'm going to put a bit in this. Uh, some blue in, it's a bit bright this blue, I'm not going to put too much in. I think there's a bit too much black in there though. So. Because I say it's dirty, it's got black inside. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pour some of this wood glue in here just to cover the surface really of that polystyrene. No doubt it will seep down, find a hole and drip out and A mess. Now at the moment it's finding its own level and it will be a smooth. Get paintbrush just even out what's left. So there we have it, um, there's a little bit more to do on it, there's pipe work underneath and the pipe work at the side, but uh, I'll go find a, a thin enough straw, I don't want too thick a straw underneath there and something I can use, uh, I'm sure I've got some tubing, I can put some wire, some heavy wire down just to do the, some heat shrink I think is I'll use on some uh, I've got some stiff wire so I'll be able to make a pipe for the side and, uh, and get that all sorted and on the layout. Thanks for watching.